Hello and welcome. In this video, we'd like to show you how to set up a game and start tracking statistics within the Breakthrough Stats app. So the first thing I'll do is touch Seasons and Games at the bottom, and then I'll touch this plus sign to create a new game. I'll touch Bulls to select them as the home team, and then I'll touch Lakers to select them as the visitor team. Beneath the team's boxes, we have these player boxes, and I can scroll through, and I can select the players I would like to serve as starters. Touching a player's name selects and deselects that player as a starter. For more information on inputting team and player information, please see our Getting Started video. Once I have the teams and starting players arranged the way I would like, I'll touch Save, and then I'll touch Track Stats. Now we can start inputting data. Before we get too far, go ahead and touch the Help button at the top of the screen for a quick overview of how we track our data in the Breakthrough Stats app. You'll notice the first step is to tap the statistic that occurs, and then tap on the player or team associated with that statistic. In the event that the statistic is a shot, except for a free throw, then tap the location on the court afterward to select where the shot occurred. I'll go ahead and touch this Help button again to go back to our main input screen. The first thing we can adjust is the play clock. Simply by touching on one of the numbers and then dragging my finger up or down, I can adjust the play clock as needed. Then I'll select the period in which I'd like to start tracking stats by touching the number of that period. Let's go ahead and start the clock. I'll touch the play button, and you'll notice in our play-by-play, -play, the players have automatically been entered to the game and we can start tracking stats. So for example, I'll say we had a two-point shot made by touching the two-point made button, and that shot was by number 13 on the Bulls team. So I'll touch number 13 Bryant, and then I'll select where that shot was made from on the shot chart simply by touching the location. You'll notice that the play-by-play -play is instantly updated, and I have the opportunity briefly to delete that shot by default. I'll go ahead and pause the clock for the moment, and we'll talk about some of the other things we can do. I'll touch pause, and the clock stops. Please remember when tracking statistics that it doesn't matter if you choose the player or the statistic itself first. Either method works, so if you choose to track the statistic and then the player or vice versa, the result will be the same. So use whatever's easiest for you. Now we can slide this slider right here up or down to adjust how much of the play-by-play -play we see, and we can also adjust some other areas of this interface. I can touch this right here to move these buttons up or down and change whether the players or stat inputs themselves are on the top or bottom. If I'd like to change any of the stats entered on the play-by-play, -play, I can touch that statistic, and then I can change the time at which it happened by scrolling through on the play clock. I can also change the player associated with it by tapping that player and then selecting a different player from the team. And then if I touch it again, you'll notice I can also change the period or I can delete that statistic by touching the delete button. If you're looking to delete something quickly on the play-by-play, -play, you can also slide your finger from the right to the left over the stat that you'd like to delete and this delete button pops up. Simply touch that to delete the statistic and it's no longer in the records there. Let's go ahead and track a few more stats. I'll touch the play button once more. I'll add a three-point shot here to number four on the Lakers and then select where he made that shot from. And then I'll add a two-point miss by number 15 on the Bulls. And I'll select over here as where he made that shot. I'll add a free throw made by number 12 on the Bulls. You'll notice that with the free throw, we don't actually have to input where that shot was made. That's taken care of automatically. I'll go ahead and pause the clock once again by touching pause. So if you'd like to sub a player out, just touch this slider over here next to the team where you'd like to sub and select the player you'd like to sub in. I'll touch Westbrook and then I'll choose the player that he's going to substitute and he's automatically entered into the game there. You'll notice that in the play-by-play -play, it shows that James left the game and Westbrook entered the game. If I'd like to see the player stats for the game so far, I can drag this section up underneath the play-by-play -play, and I can see the fouls and points scored by each player thus far. Remember that you can also do very generic tracking in Breakthrough Stats. For example, if you don't want to track by players, you can just enter in a team and then track shots for that team and do very general data collection. Also, if you only have one or two players that you'd like to track, you don't need to enter in the entire team. You can just enter in those one or two players and then track what they do specifically throughout the game. Now the shot chart gives you a quick visual breakdown showing you where on the court shots have been made or missed from. You can toggle which team's shot chart you view by selecting the Home or Visitors button at the top here. If you would like to move a shot on the shot chart, you simply need to touch where the shot was made and then drag it to wherever you would like the new location to be recorded as. To delete a shot from the shot chart, simply touch the location where the shot was made 
and then it will show up in the play-by-play -play and you can move your finger from right to left to bring up the delete button. For more flexibility in your statistic tracking, touch the back button and then touch the setup button at the bottom of the screen. We'll touch team game rules. And here we have some additional options. So for example, if I'd like to speed up my tracking and it doesn't matter to me where on the court shots were made from, I can turn off this record on court shot location switch and now that won't show up in the game. So if I go back to seasons and games and go into the game that I was tracking by touching track stats in that game, You'll notice that now the shot chart is disabled and in order to enter information, I just touch the statistic and the player associated with it and that's automatically added to the play-by-play -play without using the shot chart. Be sure to check out the setup options for more flexibility and remember you can enter in as much or as little information as you like depending on what best suits your needs for tracking. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us.